Hey folks, Nathan here. This is my channel. You can find more from me at StarWarsReport.com on Star Wars Beyond the Films and Cloud City Casino. You can find my Patreon at Patreon.com slash Nathan P. Butler and my Star Wars Timeline Gold, the most comprehensive Star Wars chronology available anywhere at StarWarsFanWorks.com slash Timeline. Okay, so all that out of the way, what is this video about? You've seen me do PlayStation VR live streams, and I'll tell you, I kind of swear by PSVR at this point. Frankly, it has to coin a phrase from a previous president, fundamentally transformed my gaming experience. I love PlayStation VR, so much so that I recently updated my hardware because, yes, they put out a second version of PlayStation VR. So with all the different new versions of the camera or the move controllers or the processor box or the headset that are out there and all these different bundles with different games, my hope here is to try to help you sort through what's available and what's actually in those packages so that you can make the best decision for you if you're going to pick up a PlayStation VR, especially with the holidays, Black Friday, and everything else approaching here. So let's start by just taking a look at the hardware itself. We're going to look at each individual piece, what differentiates it from a later version and so forth. And then we'll go very quickly through what bundles do exist and what is in each bundle. I think that's probably the most straightforward way that we can do it. And yes, we will be looking at the large and small bundles in terms of what those will include. So first, let's talk about the camera. Let's leave the headset for last and talk about the smaller parts first. Camera first. All right, now as you probably already know, there are two different versions of the PlayStation 4's camera. One that was released long, long before PlayStation VR, and then one that was released a little bit later as sort of a refresh of the hardware that has been included with PSVR since its launch. This is the original version here. It's boxy, it lays flat, it's got a little thing that it sticks into so that it can lay flat. It goes on the lip of your TV, it has a little folding thing in the back to help position it. And then you have a similar holder with the other one, but the newer one is cylindrical. But basically the hardware itself is the same. It's the same on the inside, just a different aesthetic on the outside. So when it comes to PlayStation VR, it's not going to matter which of these two you wind up picking up. You'll probably be able to find the original for slightly lower prices at this point. But really, from a hardware perspective, it doesn't matter. It's whichever you happen to prefer. Me personally, because of how tall my television is, where it's sitting, because I have it sitting on a dresser, I tend to prefer in the room where I play most of my PlayStation VR games to use the newer one because it's easier to rotate that cylinder down by very small degrees to get it to look exactly where you want it to than it is to adjust this one. You can adjust it, but it adjusts kind of that entire blocky structure at a time, which causes some issues given the fact that it's not really meant to be anything other than flat on the bottom. As soon as you tilt it, one side raises up just a little bit more than the other. Not a huge deal, but personally my preference would be to go for the newer one. Thankfully, any of the PlayStation VR bundles that you buy that are going to have anything beyond just the headset is going to include a PlayStation 4 camera, and it's going to include the new one every single time. All right, so let's talk about motion controls, because one of the things you're going to like about PlayStation VR is the ability to have your hands tracked in sort of a one-to-one -one sort of way and interact with the environment one hand at a time instead of just using a DualShock 4 controller for your PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 4 Pro. Now, yes, this does use the same technology as the PlayStation 3 era Move Motion Controls. So if you have an earlier version of the PlayStation Move Motion Controller from the PS3 era, those will work just fine. Just understand that you're gonna need two and you will not have any use for that navigation controller that was used back in the PS3 days. That is not used at all with PlayStation VR. Now, what they have done though, is after spending quite a while since the launch of PlayStation VR with just reselling all of those same versions of the motion controller that we had since the PS3 era, they eventually did refresh that hardware, which gives us a newer version. And really, there's only three differences. They're all fairly minor, but one might make a significant difference if you don't like constantly having to change plugs and so forth. So this is the original version. 
Okay, they all have a trigger. It says select on this side and then start on the other here because again, from the PS3 era, they have the square, triangle, circle, and cross buttons, the move button for your thumb, the PS button there, and it's got that globe on top that will glow in different colors to be tracked by the camera. Okay? What makes this particularly different than the other is these earlier versions are a little glossier looking, which also means that they do tend to smudge a little bit more, but honestly not very often, so not anything you should be particularly worried about. You also have a different strap. These straps have the little clasps that close and open. They can be slid up and down. So you would stick your hand in here and then just slide it on up, clasp it, and you're good to go. The other thing I would note here, because this is originally technology from the PS3 era, check it out. This is a PS3 era style USB plug. This is not something that you're going to see on any of the cables that come with your PlayStation 4. You're going to need a PlayStation 3 style plug to plug it into your system, both to synchronize it at first so that it's linked to your system and to charge these things later unless you get yourself a charging dock. And no, most of the charging docks made for this version of the Move will not work on the updated hardware. This is what you'll find actually in most of the bundles, but they have recently done a refresh on the hardware, and now you've got these. They still say start and select, even though these are actually being manufactured now kind of as a new thing. They're not quite as glossy as the other, kind of like the change in the glossiness of the PS4 controllers themselves. You've got your move button, which is now just black, your PS button, square, triangle, circle, cross, trigger, all that stuff's the same, but aside from the gloss being different, these do take the same USB type plug that is used for the DualShock 4 controllers. So if you're going to be charging it on your PS4, all you got to do is swap out the controller for this. You're not swapping out your actual wire, which is nice and convenient. But they've taken sort of a step backward, I think, when it comes to the straps. Because now you just got this little quasi-cubic looking thing here, and you slide it up and down, which is fine but not nearly as convenient to do if you have one of these on one wrist and you're trying to use the opposite hand to slide that up so it's secure on that wrist. I much prefer the old version of the straps to the new ones, and in fact, I'll probably swap mine out at some point. Otherwise, they are functionally identical. All right, so now we can talk some hardware. For those who are looking for these and actually looking for the product model number on the packaging, down kind of in the fine print, this is the original version of the PSVR, which was known as CUH-ZVR1. The other one is the exact same thing, CUH-Z, but then it's VR2 instead. So this is your original model. You got your nice part here that rests against your forehead, the padding there that rests against the back of your head where most of the weight is being distributed to. You have your dial there to tighten it. You have your button to pull it out and in to set it up around your head. You've got your lights on the back. You've got your lights on the front there. And basically, it's the form factor you would expect. You've got kind of a little indentation here on either side, but it is just an indentation. And then your visor itself, it's got the little thing to note when your head is in there. You've got your two uh, eye pieces. You got your spot for your nose with the little flap and everything. Pretty much what you would expect. Now on this version, underneath, here is your microphone. And then over here is a button that is going to slide the headset in or out as you adjust it on your face. Yes, if you wear glasses, it works just fine with glasses because of that whole putting it uh, closer or farther away from your face kind of thing. Otherwise, from a button standpoint, you don't really have any buttons there on the visor part of it. In fact, most of your buttons on this one are down the line. So we have our wire that comes down here, goes into a little loop and keeps going. You got sort of a double line kind of wire looking thing here. And you have an inline control on the wire that sort of hangs beside you. This is where you've got your power button, your mute button and unmute for the microphone that's built in, volume up, volume down, and if you're going to use headphones, 
you plug them in here and listen that way. Now it does come with a set of headphones. They're just sort of basic, regular headphones with the little earplug looking things with the padded ends that you just pop in your ears and you're good to go. Those I can't show you because our cat, when she was a kitten, destroyed the ones that I had from my first PSVR within about 24 hours of actually owning it. So uh, there is an included set of headphones. I would show you with the ones from the other set, but they're actually not the same and I don't want to confuse the matter. But yes, you can listen through headphones and it's piped through an inline control this time. Then the wire keeps going and then splits into this where each eye gets its own HDMI plug into a box that then continues with a much, much thicker wire that eventually it splits as well and plugs into your processor box. This is the original processor box. You have one side where all it has is the two HDMI cord ports uh, for your eyes there that go out to the headset. And then the other side is going to have your fan. That's the front. This is the back. Your fan, your plug for your uh, electricity, your USB plug, because you are going to have to plug in your PlayStation VR into a USB port also on your PlayStation 4. If you're using a regular PlayStation 4, yes, this means you're taking up one of your two USB ports on the front. If you're using a PS4 Pro, there is actually a USB port on the back specifically for using this. And then you have your plugs here that are going to go out to the TV and to the PS4 system themselves. And it does this weird thing where this part, as you're putting stuff in so that it can stay square, like slides to reveal and then slides back to plug these in. It's really kind of a weird thing. Now, the important part about this processor box is that you are going to have this set up to constantly have the signal pass through. If you're playing PSVR, it goes through here, processes, and that's how you wind up with the right stuff for each eye. If you're not playing VR, you're just playing a regular PS4 game or playing like a Blu-ray or something, it still passes through this before it goes to the TV unless you unplug everything. This box will allow 4K pass-through. It will not allow HDR pass-through. So if you plan to watch 4K things with high dynamic range, HDR, you will have to either change out your plugs or just say screw it if you're using this processor box. This does not allow HDR pass-through at all. All right, now let's check out its successor, the new version of PlayStation VR. Uh, released in November 2017, announced shortly before that. This is CUH-ZVR2, and you can already tell some differences by looking at it. So we've got our padding here, as before. It is a little bit lighter, by the way, and the padding is a little bit thinner in terms of how far up it goes, because you don't really need it on that very, very top part, so it cuts down on the padding. Padding on the back, you still have your dial here, uh, to tighten, you still have your button there so you can pull it in and out. You still have your same locations of all of your lights that we had before. But then things start to change. So before, there were no buttons on the top of the visor. Now there's one over here, and that's the button that moves it in and out. That is because in its original position to move it in and out, if you flip it over, we now have your microphone okay, over off to the side here because opposite the microphone is now all those volume controls that used to be on the inline control. So your volume up, volume down, mute and unmute the microphone are here. Your power button is now here on the headset itself. Looking inside, exact same thing as we saw before. And then for your audio, each side, instead of having a little recessed little area, has this weird sort of slit, soft plastic area that you can plug your headphones into so they just sit there when you're not using them. You're not listening to them like this. They just kind of sit there, and then when you're ready for them, you pull them out and put them in your ears. And it comes with kind of a specialized set of headphones. And your headphone plug is now over here. So you have this set of headphones that has this angled plastic piece that you can plug in here. The other side just has a little plastic tab that keeps it in there. I'm not going to unplug that just because I don't want to wear it out so soon. 
but then each side has your earphones that you can just listen to, and then when you're done, stick them back in the little holder thing. And then your wire, instead of being this really, really thick one initially coming out from the headset, is very thin, and it's not a double wire, it's a single wire. We follow that single wire. There isn't any point at which there's an inline control, like there was before. There isn't any point where we have that middle box that we have to have two HDMI cords plugged into so that it can then go out to the processor. It is all one wire. And the only time you have to worry about it splitting is right here at the end where it splits and goes into your processor box. The processor box itself has been redesigned. None of that weird shifting around kind of crap where it has a piece that moves or anything. It's basically just a nice rectangular box. And on the one side, you've got your plugs for each eye. On the other side, you got your plugs for TV um, and to the PS4. You've got your spot for your USB plug. You've got your spot for your power. You've got your fan. Okay? So all the same stuff except redesigned. And most importantly, this one, the version 2.0 version of the box, does allow HDR pass-through. So if you want to play games or video content, no, you can't pay UHD Blu-rays on PlayStation 4 Pro. But if you're going to play other 4K content or games in 4K with HDR, you must have this pass-through box for your PSVR. Or if you have the other PSVR, like I said, you're going to have to constantly keep switching wires out. This is the main reason most people who are upgrading to the new PSVR are doing so because they want HDR pass-through and it was not available with the original set. Which is also what's pissing people off because it's only been a little over a year since the launch of PSVR and they're already saying, hey, here's some updated hardware that kind of does what it probably should have done in the first place. So to recap here, second version, the newer one, allows HDR pass-through because it has an updated version of the processor box. The newer one has streamlined wires that are thinner so that in the going from the box, the processor box that is, to the headset, you don't actually have another connection in the middle. It also, the new one, moves the inline audio controls and headphone jack into the headset itself. And in doing so, moves around a few of the commands, the little control buttons and such. It also, the new one, allows for your audio to be through earphones that are connected into the headset itself instead of some type of inline box, if that matters to you, and has a nice little place to store your earplugs or your earphones if you're using ones that have the little rubber tips. And I would point out that it comes with three different sizes of those rubber tips. You can pull them off and put them in for whatever size makes most sense for you to be able to use them, since they are the only ones that are going to have those little pieces that are shaped the right way to necessarily attach into the band behind your head. Otherwise, any other headphones, you'll plug it in, the wire will drop down behind your head and just go to your headphones, which is still, depending on your perspective, more convenient probably than the original because at least it's not hanging in front of you getting caught in your arms when you're moving around with motion controls. So that's the hardware differences. Let's talk bundles and what's out there available right now before you go out and try to purchase a PSVR. First off, yes, you can buy just the PlayStation VR headset right now in most places. In fact, I think in all places. I think the new one's only available in a bundle yet. But in all or almost all instances of buying just the headset by itself, you're going to get the original version of the headset and the processor box that does not allow HDR pass-through. The original PlayStation VR bundle from launch is still available right now at many stores. What you get with that is the first version of the PlayStation VR demo disc that has a lot of different experiences for you to try out, plus some trailers and stuff like that, and the game PlayStation VR Worlds. Now, PlayStation VR Worlds is sort of a multi-part experience with different types of games, which is kind of like a tech demo in and of itself, but each of its games are a little bit more robust than what's on the demo disc. You have the London Heist, which is basically you're as part of a group uh, doing a robbery and then trying to escape. Fairly short, but fairly cool with the motion controls. Ocean Descent, which is the famous one for PSVR, where basically you go underwater and there's like a shark cage that you're in and stuff like that to see the surroundings. 
but you're not interacting with anything. You're just in the environment looking around. Then you have VR luge. Kind of lame, I think. It just doesn't work out all so well, but it's basically the idea that you're in a little luge sled and zipping around through traffic and whatnot. You have danger ball, which is kind of like a sort of a table tennis uh, slash breakout type of game where you're using your head to direct and smack a projectile back and forth and back and forth away from you and towards you. And then you have a Scavenger's Odyssey, which is sort of a sci-fi thing where you have free movement inside a mech suit type of thing. Okay? So five interesting experiences, fun in and of themselves, but probably not enough to sell most people on getting this bundle. There are much better bundles available, especially given how cheap PlayStation VR World excuse me, tends to be right now if you just get it digitally. This does come, though, with the new version of the camera, all the bundles that have a camera, it's the new version, as I said before, and comes with the old version of two move controllers, the ones that use the plugs that are from the PS3 era, not the PS4 era. Now, one of the earliest PSVR bundles outside of the one with PSVR Worlds that was available at launch is this one. So, not a big surprise, old headset, old processor box, old move controllers, and new camera. Again, they're all going to have the new camera. This one comes with a demo disc, but instead of PSVR Worlds, you get Until Dawn Rush of Blood, loosely tied into the Until Dawn game that was so awesome recently with the butterfly effect and everything. This one has you basically on a roller coaster going through the mind of a lunatic as you're going through weird scenarios. And while you're sitting in the roller coaster, you're zipping along and you are dual wielding weapons to kill whatever is coming at you. It's an awesome game. I much prefer this one to PlayStation VR Worlds myself, but it's not going to be for everyone. It is rated M. Now, a relatively new PlayStation VR bundle that has a lot of people pissed off right now is the one for Gran Turismo Sport. And I would note here a couple of things. Notice that this one has no move controllers. It's the hardware, the headset, and the processor box, but it's the old headset and the old processor box. The new camera, again, no move motion controllers at all, and I believe it has the new PlayStation VR demo disc, which is Demo Disc 2.0, included in it. That I'm not 100% sure of off the top of my head. And it does include Gran Turismo Sport, though bear in mind what I've got here is the Gran Turismo Sport Limited Edition. It's the regular edition that's in that bundle. But here's the thing about this. One, it's coming out right around the time that they announced, hey, you're gonna have new hardware coming up soon, and yet doesn't include the new hardware, which pisses people off royally. But also, Gran Turismo Sport is a pretty piss-poor game to choose if you're going to be trying to showcase what VR can do. Because you'll notice here it says PlayStation VR Mode Included. They advertised this game when it was originally announced as being fully playable in VR. Every race, every type of race, every location, all VR. Kind of like uh, Drive Club VR was. Turns out that was a crock. That was not true. What wound up happening when the game was actually released is that it only includes a VR mode. And when you go into the VR mode, you can do a one-on-one -on -one race, or you can just kind of move around and look at a car. That's it. The entire rest of the game is played outside of VR on your regular television screen. It's nice, it's pretty, it's fun, especially if you like eSports when it comes to your racing titles, but basically, it's showing off a VR mode that looks good, but is very limited and kind of emphasizes how from time to time we will get games where they just have a tacked on VR mode just to say they're for PlayStation VR without really going the full measure of VR. So kind of buyer beware on this one. Old hardware, even though it's a new bundle and Gran Turismo Sport only has a VR mode that is very limited. It is not a fully VR game. This one is one I would pass unless you just really want Gran Turismo Sport. If you just want a VR racing game, get yourself a PlayStation VR from one of the other bundles and pick up Drive Club VR or Dirt Rally VR. They are fully featured, completely VR games. Not Gran Turismo Sport.
Now we get into the bundles that actually have the updated hardware. So we're talking about the updated processor box and the updated headset, along with not just the new camera that they all come with, but the updated versions of the Move controllers with the newer USB plugs as well. So a hardware upgrade all across the board, minus the camera that was already an upgrade in the first place. Now, the first one to include these was released on November 17th, 2017. It comes with the PlayStation VR Demo Disc 2.0. How do I know? Because that's the one I picked up. And the game included is the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim VR. Yes, Skyrim is one of the most acclaimed games of its era. It was available back on the previous generation systems. It's gotten updates on modern systems. Hell, there's even a, a Nintendo Switch version of it now. This is the VR version. And you might be saying, oh, so it's going to be some kind of little gimped out VR version where you're playing only part of the game or only part of the game is in VR like what they did with Gran Turismo Sport. No. This is the entire enormous Skyrim game plus its three DLCs combined into one massive VR experience. The entire game is playable in VR. Very similar to how you had a Resident Evil 7 that was either something you play on the TV or play the entire game in VR. The difference being that with Resident Evil 7, you could switch between modes, whereas in this case, this is a purely VR version of Skyrim, and if you want a purely TV version, you would then go buy a different copy that's not the VR copy. Fantastic, fantastic experience. And if you're thinking about the amount of time you're going to spend playing a game when it comes to a VR experience, a lot of VR games are a little shorter than other games. Skyrim, well, let me put it this way. This is the most comprehensive strategy guide released for Skyrim. It's over 1,100 pages. And all of that content is in Skyrim VR. Nothing is removed. This, for me is the best option bundle available at the moment. And then finally, for those of you who are going to pick up a PlayStation VR, but you're thinking you might wait until a little bit after Black Friday, but still during the holiday season, there is one more PlayStation VR bundle that is being released on December 1st, 2017, that is a little bit different. It's a lot more like the Gran Turismo Sport bundle in that it has a headset, processor box, camera, but no move controllers, but this one is the updated headset and the updated processor box, so that's awesome. And of course, the camera included as well. This one's going to come with your Demo Disc 2.0 and a game that's not released yet as of the time I'm recording this, which is Doom VFR. Now, this is not all of the original Doom game turned into a VR experience. It is a custom VR experience set within the Doom universe that looks a lot like the Doom that you might have played recently for PlayStation 4. So, Doom VFR, and yes, that's VR with a F-bomb dropped into the middle of it. That's going to be available December 1st. It's going to be a $30 game, or you can pick up the bundle and get it. Just bear in mind that if you get the Doom VFR bundle, you will not have the Move Motion controllers. You'll need to get them elsewhere for the most immersive possible PlayStation VR experiences. I hope this video will help you in deciding which version of PlayStation VR is right for you, which version of the hardware you might want to find, and where you're going to find it, along with what bundles you might be interested in based on the games that are included. I would always suggest, don't buy a bundle just for its game. The games can always be purchased separately. Go with however you're going to get the hardware that you want. For right now, the only ways to get the updated PSVR hardware with its updated headset and processor box is either in the Skyrim bundle or in the upcoming Doom VFR bundle. If you don't care either way on what type you get, then any of the other bundles will do. Just understand that the other bundles will be the older version of the headset and the older version of the processor box, so you will not be able to use HDR pass-through the way you would with the new hardware. Thank you all for your interest. I appreciate your time, and hey, happy holidays and have fun with PlayStation VR.